You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Wendy Coyle talks about the Quick Start to College program at Zane State College. We'll learn what's ahead for New Concord from Village Administrator Charlotte Coley. And local veteran Tom Bates talks about his appearance on 60 Minutes this past weekend. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to a brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We are coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And as always, we hope you're having a great day and, yes, and you're staying warm. And we survived the ice storm. We survived the ice storm. My first guest is Wendy Coyle. She is the Quick Start Coordinator at Zane State College. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Is this the first time yes, this you've is been the on first the show? Time I've been out. Other representatives from Zane State have been on, and I've heard good things about the show. Well, well, so good. It's finally my turn. That's a lot better than hearing bad things <laughs> exactly. about the show. How long have you been with uh, Zane State? This will be my eighth year at Zane State, and um, I do various jobs. So one of my main jobs is I teach English. That's why I'm speaking correctly right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to check your writing later on. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> um, but then recently, just over the last year, um, I was promoted to Quick Start Coordinator, which is the main reason I'm here to talk a little bit about Quick Start. What is Quick Start? What is Quick Start? That's a good question. <laughs> um, well, Quick Start is a program that's designed for um, students that are interested in college. They have to have a, a high school diploma or a GED. And um, s there's different scenarios in how you may enter the program. So sometimes students will come and it's too late to get all your paperwork, your financial aid done, but you still really want to start um, college. So we start a little bit later into the semester, and this is a free course for students. Okay. Um, and we get students ready for you know starting college the following semester. Um, another um, method of entering. Sometimes we have the non-traditional students, so people like you and I, a little older. <laughs> uh, no, me, a lot older. But uh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes that's very intimidating, um, and so we have a group of students that come in that route and just a little nervous about college and this is a perfect place to start to get your feet wet um, we introduce you to all the expectations of college um, probably one of the best things that our students get from the program is that we do a refresher on math oh, which okay. you were laughing about the English I can laugh about the math okay. because okay. you know it's starting to fade now that I'm all English um, and then we do a refresher on English and writing writing skills and we also work with computer skills oh, okay so um, they get that refresher okay we also work with students on financial aid because that is a big barrier for students wanting to start college how do you even start financial yeah. aid yeah um, so we help students through that process um, and again it's a free course um, once they finish the course they get two free college credits which is invaluable really it right is. It is. yes it's exactly um, and students love that too because they can say, no, I've already taken a college class mm -hmm, and they've done mm -hmm. it for free. But the biggest thing I find that students get out of this is just the confidence. Um, they're just ready to start. Like from the first day they enter the class, they're a little nervous to the last day and they're just like, they've always been there, mm -hmm. smiling, joking mm -hmm. around and mm -hmm. just ready to start school. So that's probably my favorite part of the Quick Start program. Yeah. You mentioned about, you know, uh, older people, you know, getting back into college. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, it is intimidating. I could, I could see where mm -hmm. that would be. Um, and, but this is, like you say, it just kind of gradually eases them in. Yep, yep, it definitely. And one um, kind of obstacle that our non-traditional or older students talk about a lot is the computer skills. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time on that and we we go at a slower pace. We're not just going to fly through and expect you to know everything. Um, and another thing, if you know, if you are an older student thinking about the program, one of the things I've always said about my non-traditional students 
they generally do better than all my other students. I, when I see one of those type of students enter, I just automatically know they're probably going to do well. I don't know if it's because we've lived some life and we can persevere now a little bit. I, I think that, yeah, all those things would, would factor together like that. I mean, you, you, you tend to focus more, I, I think. Focus, mm -hmm. is uh, focus is yeah. a big one. Of course, my focus is just going out the window squirrel. But I mean, <laughs> you know, but I, I understand that. But again, it, it's like for me at, at at 61 years age going back to college it would be intimidating oh yeah d uh, definitely and you're in there with a bunch of younger students but generally my non-traditional students do well, so well and they're they're a favorite in the class the younger folks start to look up to them and think mm. well this person has some knowledge that I don't have so, so it's perfect for traditional or non-traditional non yep not or non-traditional so this kind of it came to be out of necessity didn't it? Right. Um, we found, and this program started about 10 years ago, we were having the students come at the last minute and they could not, they didn't have the paperwork ready or the financial aid, um, or they were scared about the academics. And then we also had the non-traditional student nervous. Mm -hmm. And um, so eventually we developed a program that would handle that type of student so that they would feel better about the college process in general. So really when, it, when the question comes up, who can enroll? Uh, really just about anybody. Isn't yep, it? there's no age limit. Um, the main thing is you just have to have a GED or graduated high school and um, you can come into our campus down here in Cambridge. We also have a program, same program at Zanesville, Zanesville. and we can get you all set up. It's pretty easy to enroll and um, our session here in Cambridge starts February 6th. And we have an afternoon session okay. um, from 12.30 to 3.30, and we have an evening session from 6 to 9. So um, that way, you know, if people are working, they can hit that evening section as okay. well. So if you are thinking about college, whether you're a traditional student or you're somebody that's a little bit older and you'd just like to go back and, and get a quality education, you know, you can't beat Zane State College, especially with the uh, Quick Start program. That's correct. All right. Wendy Coyle, Quick Start Coordinator. Pleasure to meet oh, you nice and thanks for coming you. on. How did I do? Speech-wise. Uh, very well. I'm just, I am more concerned about the writing <laughs> that he's hiding. <laughs> okay. Back with more Talk of the Town right after this. You're not seeing this paper. <laughs> Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the classic difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back to our show. I'm Perry Veronich. He's Adam Green behind the camera, and this is Talk of the Town. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Charlotte Coley is the new Concord Village Administrator. Um, she joins me right now on Talk of the Town. Uh, 
first, my first question that I wrote down here is, mm -hmm. how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm finally not sick anymore. I got over most of the crud and junk that everybody else has. So that's, you know. When's your due date? March 29th. It's going to be here soon. Probably not soon yeah. enough, huh? It depends on the day. But yeah, <laughs> we have the addition. We have the flooring and the addition. So the baby has a place to sleep now, which is exciting. That so. is exciting. And yeah. you guys have to be excited about it. We are. We're having a little girl. We have two little boys. You have two boys now. So, I thought so. So, so this will be fun. Wow. I hope. The big brothers. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. excited about it. Uh, hey, you're excited about uh, a new Concord. Let's, oh, definitely. Let's, let's just go back and recap a little bit from 2017. Um, hiring the new police chief was a big one for you, wasn't it? That was huge. Mindy Peck, our new police chief, is working out really, really well. She's really pulled our team together and, uh, you know, we have a few new officers who are fairly green and she's done wonders with them, helping to get them the training and the perspective that they need to do a good job in the community. And she's got lots of great ideas, been working a lot with OSP and the sheriff's office mm -hmm. just to try and come up with some different ways that we can do better at what we do. Um, trainings, different um, pieces of equipment, yeah. are there grants out there, stuff like that. Just just to open up some of the options for us. Okay. So yeah, what we're really impressed. You also were working on a, a water project, correct? Right, right. We have a new groundwater storage tank that is being built as we speak. The crew's there today actually um, doing a lot of the work. It has taken longer than we thought because some manufacturing issues, it just took longer to mm -hmm. get it done. Mm -hmm. And then the weather hit. And then the weather hit. Right. So so they're up there this week trying to, to get the tank up off the ground. Um, it'll be really neat when it's done. It'll be a, a, a taller tank than what we had before. Um, kind of a dark green so you won't be able to see it as well. Oh, okay, kind of blend um, in. Right, right. That what was our would, goal. What, what are the benefits of the new tank? So the, the new tank not only increases our capacity for new development, either commercial or residential, um, but it also will aid our system. It's a vital piece in our system. For the last six months or so, mm -hmm. we've been running off our, our water tower on the north end of town, mm -hmm. and we've been able to, working with our engineers, come up with ways to make it work. However, now that the cold weather's hit, we're seeing the downside of only running off one tank instead of two because we're having lots of water breaks. Oh. So our staff, they've really been working their fingers to the bone, especially in the cold, trying to contain the water breaks and deal with the issues so we can't yeah. get this tank up fast enough. Yeah, and when you have weather, the cold, the continued cold like we have, right. it really tests the metal of your infrastructure, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. And normally with, you know, we've had to reverse flow in, the, mm -hmm. in these pipes. Mm. And, and that's compromised them a little bit. So normally in the winter time, as long as we're not messing with things, we're, we're pretty good. We'll have a water break or two, but it's not too bad. Yeah. But this year, because we've messed with so many things, yeah. we're, we're seeing a lot more. Oh, so boy. it's and okay. Just something you deal with. Yeah. As an administrator, you deal with these things, don't we you? We do. We deal with all the uh, residents and the businesses that are impacted. We just uh, lifted a boil alert and our Meadowood subdivision um, on our east side of town from a break this weekend. Mm -hmm. And... You know, all those folks had to, to boil their water and pay attention to what was going on. Mm -hmm. They were without water for a while. Mm. So it does take a toll on everyone involved. But we're, we're hopeful that the tank will be done. Mm -hmm. I would, I don't want to give a date, but, mm -hmm. you know, early this year. Okay. So that is a project that is going to carry over into 2018. It is, yeah. And what are some other things? You're working on uh, a budget right now? Yeah. Right now, uh, we're a statutory village, so we fall under the Ohio revised code. So mm -hmm. typically I would want to do my budget in late 17 to start the year fresh, mm -hmm. but that's not how we operate. So we actually don't pass our budget until March. Right now we're working under our temporary appropriations. It gives us money to pay for bills mm -hmm. and salaries and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we will be working with our village council on priorities, getting the budget set so that in March, at our council meeting in March, we can pass it and get our permanent appropriations and go from there. All right. So that'll really lay out a lot of our priorities. Well, our time's moving. We've got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. What else are we looking ahead to? Um, oh. Just a couple of things yeah. right now. Yeah. So 2018 is going to be a, a busy, crazy year. Uh, I'm going to be out of the office for a little while. So, you know, we're working with staff just I, internally I making sure. I can't imagine why. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, there's this, there's this kid 
you know. <laughs> but but yeah, it, it, we're we're working with everybody to make sure the mayor, department heads, making sure everybody knows what's going on, what needs to be covered, who's mm -hmm. up to bat for what. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we've got a good plan in place, and, and we'll know more as we go forward. Um, we're working really well with the university. Dr. Hassler has reached out to us oh, and and said, how can we partner together to do that's more awesome. for the community? Which is yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it's really refreshing. So, um, you know, we've done some infrastructure projects. We're also looking at partnering on a, a concert block party sort of thing in the fall, um, so that the students can be there. Uh, we're looking at maybe Labor Day weekend, something fun like that, and and just just to celebrate the community. So mm -hmm. so we're getting some plans together on those things. We're also working with our council. We have one new council member, uh, Steve D Wooten, Dr. Steve Wooten, mm -hmm. and then the rest are returning council members. Mm -hmm. But we want to <clears throat> go over our priorities in a council retreat style of mm -hmm. a, a meeting. Oh, that'd be cool. Just to let them sit together yeah. and talk and make sure that everybody's on the mm -hmm. same page, the priorities and the initiatives that they laid out the last year still make sense. Are there new things they want to tackle? Mm -hmm. All those kind of, you know. So so that'll get us all on the, the same page going forward. And that's what it's all about in closing. Yeah. Yeah. Being on the same page, that's what makes everything happen, isn't it? Definitely. Charlotte Coley, the new Concord Village Administrator. Uh, first thing, we want to wish you uh, uh, much success with your upcoming delivery. Thank you. I know you're looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs> you are. <laughs> but thanks for coming on the show and thanks oh, for all you yeah, do. Yeah, definitely. Us. Thanks for having me. All right. Back with more Talk to the Town right after this. <laughs> We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. The Old Country Loft features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. Welcome back to Talk to the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Hope you're having a great day today. My next guest is Tom Bates. He is a local veteran. and He's got quite a story to tell. Good to see you. And first thank thing you. I want to say is thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Thank we you. We really appreciate that very much. Give us uh, your backstory. Who is Tom Bates? Um, I joined the military after the uh, September 11th tax. Um, straight out Was of that kind of like of a school. catalyst for you? Yeah, I graduated actually in 2000. And uh, to the class of 2002. Okay. So that was my direct catalyst. I joined the military right after that. Okay. Uh, I served six and a half years as a military police officer. Um, thought I was going to be a cop. Ended up being uh, <laughs> more of a trainer of uh, international forces and stuff like that. Um, served uh, three deployments, two in Iraq, uh, wow. both times to the city of Mosul. And wow. then the third deployment was in, uh, to Afghanistan for 15 months on the uh, Pakistani border. Wow. And, and really, you know, I told you when I was talking to you earlier, I can't imagine what, what that's like. Nobody can unless you're there, right? Yeah, it's different. It's definitely culture shock. Yeah, really. 
You recently appeared on 60 Minutes this past Sunday, is that correct? Yes, correct. What led up to that? Let's start with the research that you're doing, the groups that you're with, and then what led up to that? Um, a lot of it led up to, um, during those deployments, actually, I had been um, struck with uh, on four different occasions with IEDs, actually, um, with one of them actually being like a catastrophic strike. The whole vehicle was destroyed and stuff like that. Oh, my that. goodness. So a lot of it, um, I've had a lot of issues with um, TBI, basically traumatic brain brain injury, okay. um, but a lot of it hadn't matched up with what is regularly on record and how the symptoms and stuff should be. So I started doing my own research into all the different effects and what ha might happen to the brain and stuff like that. And over the years, I learned something about uh, called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, a lot of your viewers will probably be familiar with it as being the football disease or the disease oh, okay. from the movie Concussion, yeah. actually. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, through Dr. Amalu. Uh, a lot of that... Uh, was um, interesting stuff, but it's a post-mortem disease. You can only figure it out if you have it or not post-mortem. Well, up until recently, uh, that was the only way. Right now, there is a new um, radio tracer that's being tested out there. Um, right now, it's just being tested on was just being tested on football players, pretty much uh, to get their population and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I found out about a few of the studies and reached out to several of the, um, the people that ran the studies, and uh, the one in New York actually contacted me back and then we started I started working with them because he had been interested in starting on veterans also mm -hmm. so I started working with them we created a uh, list on what they were looking for for veterans and stuff like that and then I became the first guinea pig wow Wow. It, it, again, we can't understand what, you know, an IED, uh, it, it, is it pretty much the concussive force that, that does a lot of the damage? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, this all led up to 60 Minutes. So take us from the research to what happened on 60 Minutes. Why were you there? Um, I'd done the tests last um, January, actually, or I'm sorry, last February, and um, they had been approached before by 60 Minutes actually to do the story on a football player when they first started the research. Well, that ended up falling through, and so they approached him again when the CT came back up in the news again about doing another story. At this point, they um, didn't have any of the football players want to do it again, but um, I had offered to help anything that they needed, so they reached out to me to do the story instead. And so from there, it went on to a story about uh, combat veterans experiencing the same as football players. So what was it like the whole 60 Minutes filming? We're we're calling this seven minutes. You know, we, we're short, but what was that like? Um, different, uh, very, um, very like in depth, very, in, very in your face. So they went through the whole testing process. So um, I'm in the hospital <laughs> in my gown and stuff like that, getting filmed the entire time. So they time. filmed while you were doing that. Yes. Yes, I went back for a second testing in August, and that's when they filmed all that for uh, confirmation. Because veterans' are s brains exposure is slightly different, so they wanted to confirm that it was indeed what they were seeing, in, like in the football. How is it different? Um, just because with uh, football, you have the concussions are usually impact concussions, so okay. it's okay. straight force on force. So you have a lot more of the concussions occurring, damage to the front and back of the brain as it shakes around in there. With us, it's um, more of a blast wave. You still have the front and back motion from the actual initial wave, but you have overpressure and underpressure occurring as the air moves around from the actual blast that's consumed. So a lot of that causes internal injuries just through oh a ripple effect. Wow. I did not know that. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, at this point, how are you doing? Um, uh, I'm well on my medication and stuff like that. Um, uh, I have a lot more... I'm a lot more interesting of a case. Uh, I have a lot more motor skill issues and stuff like that. I've developed um, something called myoclonic tremor. Basically, um, anytime I move, uh, my body tremors with it, or even thinking about moving, my body tremors with it. So, but um, I'm, on, I'm on medication and stuff like that to control that a lot. So that is all as a result of the brain injury. I mean, yes. all, all these things start at the brain level. Yes, it's a, it was a, it's a very slow cascade. I went from just twitching in my left hand over for several for two or three years until uh, full body tremor. So it took about ten years, but it's all it's a very slow. That's the only thing positive about CTE is it's a very slow condition. Is there anything that can reverse this? 
as of right now? As of right now, no, and that's why the research is so important because in order to test out medications and stuff like that, you have to have live subjects. And as of right now, the official only way to do it is post-mortem, so you can't test on dead brains. So, And, and why is that? Um, just because the criteria is so hard and this, the technology is still brand new. So this, this substance has only been out for a few years in testing, and it's going to stay in testing phase for a little while longer. Um, the first confirmation has finally happened though actually just about uh, a month ago the first person who undertook the test died and so they autopsied the brain so they and they autopsied positive. that okay yep. so that's really the start yes. of this whole thing what would you say to to other veterans uh, who may be experiencing what you're experiencing? How can you help them? How can it be helped? Um, if you're experiencing like any symptoms, more like um, PTSD or anything like that, and you've been exposed to blast or multiple concussions and like that, if you go onto the 60 Minutes webpage itself there and click on the story, they have links to uh, not only donate your brain, but there's links to the doctors who are conducting the study and the research and such. And as far as you know the symptoms. There is medication that can somewhat there, treat that. The, uh, the medications out right now are, are to treat the symptoms. There is no current anything to actually treat the condition. Wow. Before we end up, we want to make mention that uh, Tom is Tacy, Tacy's brother. <laughs> yeah. So we just want to throw that out there, Tacy. You know, for <laughs> you. <laughs> but I, hey, you know, uh, wow, it's, it's quite a story. Uh, but. Um, it's a it's a positive thing that the research is going on, right? Yes, yes. Okay. It's all about research. <laughs> I've been talking with uh, local veteran Tom Bates. Again, thank you so much for coming on the show, and thank you so much for your service. Right, thank you. All right, and we're going to be back to wrap this one up right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. That's going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks again to our guests, Wendy Coyle, Charlotte Coley, and Tom Bates. And uh, check out his 60-minute segment. If you want more information about the research and, and what Tom's all about and what he's going through, check out that 60 Minutes uh, segment. Also, uh, lots of ways to talk, watch Talk of the Town, TV Channel 2, at yourradioplace.com, and at YRPTV on YouTube. So check it out. And like us on Facebook, and tell all your friends and neighbors about us, okay? For producers the director Adam Green. I'm Perry Bronich. We'll see you next time on Talk of the Town. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. 
food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a a great great place to live, work, and play. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door.